galaxy far away, in the not too distant future, the starship StarQuest J316 is on a mission spreading God's love in the greater Omega Galaxy. Paper has been outdated and all written communication is now digital. Believers in the galaxy rely entirely on their cyber Bibles and have forgotten the outdated practice of Bible memorization. Lieutenant Nova, set course for the Omega Galaxy. All right, Captain, course laid in. Full speed ahead. All systems are functioning normally, Captain. We are approaching the uncharted world of planet B6241. It appears to be inhabited. This could be a new opportunity to share God's love. Agreed. Proceed with standard communication greetings. On screen. Greetings to the inhabitants of planet B6241. We are StarQuest J316 on a mission to spread the good news throughout the planets of the Omega Galaxy. Requesting permission to transport down to the surface. That's strange. It, it seems the transmission didn't go through. Trying again. Greetings, inhabitants of planet B6241. We are Star's Quest, J316. Requesting permission to transport down to the surface. Captain, I read no electronic signals coming from surface. I do not believe this planet has interstellar communication capabilities. All right, let's take the ship down for a surface landing. Boris, please notify Chief Engineer Stella to prepare our Bible introduction modules and personal replicators in case the citizens of this planet are in need of food or clothing. Hi, Commander. Message sent. 
Approaching planet B6241. Reducing speed for atmospheric entry. Initiating landing protocols. Strange? How do you mean, strange? Well, when we tried to access the valley where she shared with the The verse, it wasn't there. Wasn't there? What do you mean it wasn't there? What is it, Frenchie? It wasn't there. It's the Intergalactic Bible Database. Wait, what? Oh, it's the Intergalactic Bible Database. Only source of scripture for generations. There's no way that it simply wouldn't be there. That's, that's how we read the Bible. Perhaps it is malfunction? <laughs> Did you try blowing on it? <laughs> Captain, I do not see how blowing on it um, would solve um, the... I'm, I'm joking, Boris. Sometimes ancient electronics would begin to work if you hit them or blew into them. Aye, Captain. Understood. Well, it looks like we're still able to access our mission verse. But just to be safe, you'll look into it, Boris? Wonderful. Boris will be able to reboot the system again. And we'll be able to read the Bible verses again in no time. Captain, landing complete. Ready to disembark. Star Quest J316. Let's go, crew. Tablets out. And remember our mission verse Mark 12, 29 to 31. And what's our mission? To boldly share the love of God to everyone we meet. Look at them, getting off the ship without a care in the world. You're pretty mischievous. I am so excited to start working with you. 
It's not often you get to be the apprentice of a real villain. Do you think they suspect what you're doing? <laughs> they never know what's coming. They have no idea. All I have to do is finish erasing the Bible from the Bible database, verse by verse. So nobody notices until long after I've deleted the whole thing. I what did you say? Nothing. Oh, nothing. Brilliant! Soon, the Intergalactic Bible Database will be no more. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, no. Villains don't giggle. For heaven's sake, you need to laugh like this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it. <gasps> Greetings, visitors! I'm Cameron. Welcome to Planet Harmonia! Thank you. We're the crew from J316. Wow! A, a spaceship! Does it... does it fly? He says, of course the starship flies. Um, who... who are they? understand them? How? Well, I took a class at Starquist Academy. Our mission is to boldly go where no man has gone before, to share the love of God. Oh, well, we're Christians too. We're so glad to meet others in the family of God. Captain, I have just checked. Apparently, problem from earlier is not just glitch. Many verses have become missing all over the galaxy. Hmm. Alert the crew. I'm sorry to cut our visit short, but we must go back to the ship to investigate the situation further. Oh, well, maybe we can help. You all are too kind, but the situation is galaxy-wide. Many verses have seemed to just disappear. Captain, I have checked again. All the verses are gone. Yeah, all of them. Kaput. What? That's, that's impossible. It, it can't be. Hey, I have Bible verses memorized in in my heart. You do? Do you know any verses in Romans? I do! Good. Let's all go back to the ship. We'd be grateful for your assistance.
spaceship. <laughs> what does this button do? Are you serious? Down. Literally have one shot. Welcome aboard Star Quest J three one six. You you talk funny. Yes, I am Droidbot. I was assembled in Soviet Russia in year twenty sixty five. My incredibly sophisticated internal processors can calculate up to two thousand petabytes of data per second. Whoa, a real robot? Droidbot, and I'm. <laughs> Boss, did, did you just do an evil villain laugh? Perhaps I have, Commander. I apologize. Uh, Captain, I have successfully reprogrammed Romans 12, 1 through 2 back into the Galactic Bible database. So we've got two verses. Yes! yes. yes. Good job, crew. Only 31,100 verses to go. Oh. Well, nonetheless, I'm still impressed that you committed this verse to your memory. I memorized that one, my family, when I was really little. It reminds me that I can worship God by the way I live. And being transformed by the renewing of my mind means that God changes my heart and my mind and helps me live for Him each day. <laughs> what a unique idea, memorizing the Bible. Practice of Bible memorization was popular in ancient Earth civilizations. It faded away with advent of technological age beginning in year 2030. 2030. 2030. 2030. Uh, thank you, Boris. Are you sure your circuits are functioning correctly? Perhaps not, Captain. Uh, Chief Stella, take a look at his data processor, just to be sure. Um, uh, right away, Captain. Captain. Unfortunately, I've confirmed that the entire intergalactic Bible database has been completely erased. It no longer exists. I wish I had the comfort of some psalms right now. Ooh, I know a lot of psalms. Good. Crunchy, enter them in for us, will you? Well, I love Psalms 103. It reminds us to praise God and keeps us from forgetting all the wonderful things that He does for us.
intergalactic Babel database is empty. My plan worked! <laughs> and that rad robot is hacking into the system for us without even knowing it. Excellent. I am sick of StarQuest J316 traveling around sharing their cyber Bibles. They came to my home planet last year and everyone loved them. Everyone wanted to know about this God, the one who created the universe. I tried telling them, don't worry about who created it. Worry about who's running it. But they didn't listen. So that's why I vowed to move God from their memories. But, but what if they find the compromised circuits in the robot's data processors? They won't. And now that it's gone, I'm the only one with the codes to restore the database. This is just so much fun. The circuits we implanted will make the Joybot do whatever we want. You're a sweet little bird. Tweet, 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 tweet. You're a sheep. <laughs> You're an ancient earth rock star. <laughs> You're a pastor. Praise the Lord, church. In the house of the Lord tonight, we are thankful to be here. And God said, I will protect my people. I will put my hand upon them who keep my command. And I will protect my people. Will the congregation please fill these altars tonight with every head bowed and every eye closed? Do we have any other verses memorized? Um, how about John 14, 6? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. I got it, Captain. Another verse entered. Oh, I have one! John 15, 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If men remain in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I love both those verses. They remind us that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Um, oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt. But Captain, we have a situation with Forrest. Look at that. No! Over here! The robot is so cool! Uh -huh. um, this seems like a good opportunity to learn a verse from Romans.
captain. Romans, <laughs> Romans 8, 35 through 39 have successfully been entered back into the database. Thanks, everyone. Yes. yes. Well done. Once again, good job. These are such awesome verses to memorize. They remind us that nothing can separate us from God's love. Boris, as much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, we're getting you to the repair bay immediately. It is too late. I have disabled the shield. Deleter will rule the world. Deleter? Who's what? Deleter? Delicatessen. 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 Sandwich. Delicatessen. Door. Yes, my joy boy friend. Security! Security! Never mind that. I disabled your communication system. Your Jobot was helpful enough to give me access to everything on your ship once I hacked into your processors. I'm sorry. I'm being rude. Let me introduce myself. I am Deletor of the glorious planet Amnesia. And these are my minions. Wait, did, did you say amnesia? Amnesia. Now I have to start over. I am Deletor of the glorious planet Amnesia. Sound familiar? Um, no, it doesn't ring a bell at all. I have no memory of this amnesia. Have uh, we been there before? Yes, you must certainly have. I'm surprised you don't remember. I'm just kidding. I know why you don't remember. Because anyone that visits my planet never remembers anything. But after you and your people left, everyone was talking about Jesus and God's word and wouldn't submit to me. So that's when I vowed to remove God from the galaxy. <laughs> Zappy, the giggling. Wait, you're the one who erased the Bible database. Come here. Once yes, we. I most certainly we. am. And now without God's word, you will feel hopelessly abandoned and will submit to me! We'll never submit to you! Not in a thousand years. Oh, I just love seeing their shatter expressions. Why aren't they shattered? Why don't they feel devastated by God? Because Why do they not feel hopelessly abandoned? What? Because your plan, it's not gonna work. The inhabitants of this planet haven't been affected by your sin sinister plan. They started memorizing Bible verses long before you ever started erasing them. I'm not concerned. They can't memorize the whole Bible, can they? Um, we may not know them all, but there's others in our family who do. Christ followers all across the galaxy have been studying God's word for generations to learn how to follow him. She's right, and there's power in the Word of God. But the database, that was the power! No, the power is in God's Word. You can erase a database, but you can't erase God's Word or its power. And we can show you God's love, even when you're trying to hurt us. Love? I don't need love. I have power! You might have power, but you need a breath mint. Oh! Yeah. And everyone needs love. God's love isn't like anything else. God's love is unconditional. It doesn't depend on what you do or who you are. So you're saying that this God can even love me? God, he loves even you. God wants us to show love even when people do harmful things to us. He wants us to love each other with His love and live in peace with one another. And can someone please get the leader and her minions something to drink? They've traveled a long way and must be thirsty. All right, Captain, I'm on it. Maybe some mouthwash? Well, thank you. I'm quite parched. You don't have any more guitar solos for us, do you, Boris? What is this? Oh, forget it. Now on to restoring the Bible database. Crew, put on alert on all frequencies. We need the whole family of God to work together to restore his scriptures. 
Gladly, Commander. I, I got it. Captain, I apologize. It seems it was me that helped delete her with her plan. I deleted the Bible. It's not your fault, Boris. We trust that God is always on our side, working for our good. Like it says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. The captain's right. If all of this didn't happen, we wouldn't have learned the outdated art of Bible memorization. I never knew just how important it was to memorize God's word in my heart. And I always thought it would be there for us to read. Christians throughout the centuries have been committing God's word to memory, using it to feed their souls and guide their steps every day. Captain, Captain, you might want to hear this. Check your bowels out of base. What? Captain, I have here. checked the database. It, it is back, no longer kaput. All of them. Deletor has undeleted them. Yes! <laughs> oh, no. Well, I have learned that God's word will never pass away, but it's restored on one condition, that you will teach me it and show me God's love because I don't see how he can love somebody like me. Gladly, we'd love to help. God loves you just as much as he loves us. And as we learn to walk with him, we realize how great his grace is towards us, no matter how many times we mess up, because, well, none of us are perfect. Because you're not under the law, but under grace. You plead my cause. You ride my walls. You break my chains. You overcome. You gave your life to give me mine. You say that I am free. for you, for my powers, my prayer, and weight.
gift of God. So someone came up to me the other night and was like, who's your favorite artist? And like most people do when they ask you a question, he didn't really care for my opinion, but proceeded to tell me what he thought about the struggle to recognize who's the greatest of all time. He said, I mean, is it Shakespeare? Is it Frost? Picasso, Michelangelo, maybe Mozart, Rembrandt, Hemingway, Beethoven. He went on and on, never recognizing that. Even his infrastructure to answer that question was misled and outdated. So finally, I smiled and kindly said, okay, sir, you asked me who's the greatest of all time and you've shared your thoughts. Now let me share mine. Because there is no debate about who is the greatest. All those other artists you mentioned, well, you see the greatest, he made them. And this artist, he is the master of time. That's right, of eternity. You may not realize it, and most won't recognize it, yet they encounter his art every single day. He deserves all of the acclaim, he deserves all of the fame, but all the other artists, they will pass away. Oh, and by the way, his name is Yahweh, the Messiah, your Redeemer. There is none greater. All those other artists you mentioned, sir, well, you see, but the one who gifted them bends galaxies, or haven't you heard? See, in the palm of his hand, he, the author of life, held all the sand when he whispered, let us make man. What if I told you that you were God's poetry? See, long ago, he picked up his eternal paintbrush, dipped in his glory, and he chose to place us in that magnificent story. And though it sounds outlandish, we're not the product of random chances. In fact, we are not even the vine, we're actually the branches. And in the same way, we're not the artists, but rather the canvas. Because in an instant, God thought to make art. He shaped you uniquely and beautifully, individual from the start. He touched the canvas of flesh and he said, this one is better than the rest. I'll give him my image. Don't let that go to your head. And so he crafted and he made every arm and leg ligaments, tendons, muscles, blood vessels, veins, arteries. He said, they are going to have a part of me. And about that time, this guy with whom I spoke with butted back in and said, that all sounds well and good, but I'm wretched and filthy. God won't use me, or will he? And I said, aw, oh, that's precisely what's so awesome about God. No matter what we have done, God doesn't refuse us, neither does he stand to accuse us. He redeems us in Jesus promising never to lose us. So stop saying that you're dirt, that you're scum of the earth. You ought to be careful how you're talking when speaking about someone else's work. Because in baptism, we are saved. We are no longer filthy. All that is anyways is pride, clothed in false humility. If only we would believe that we were created in his likeness, we'd stop saying we are wretched, filthy, shameful, and guilty. For by his blood, each one's been made righteous. I mean, don't you see? We're drawn to repentance because of his kindness. So how dare you call yourself worthless when he says you are priceless? All I'm saying is this, that he is behind it all. So why do we then give him no credit at all? Consider every scientist, inventor, philosopher, or teacher, and their contributions and inventions down through the ages. Well, you see, sir, it was by his hand they received inspiration. He anointed the fingers of the musician, the author and poet as they wrote upon the pages. It was his inspiration, his intellect, by grand design that demonstrated their genius. He, sir, was the true mastermind. And in the same way our lives are borrowed time, even this poem itself is borrowed lines, because the most ridiculous statement that we could ever say is that this work is mine. If we are not self-sustaining, no, we're not even self-creating. Technically, we do nothing original. We're just imitating. And that's not a diss. What I'm trying to say is this. Even our own creativity is just an outflow of his. And so I'll end with this. You know that statement about giving credit where credit is due? Well, if that statement happens to be true, it's about time that we give God his rightful credit too. For he is a God in the business of making all things new. And here's the truth. He's not done making a masterpiece of you.
everyone in the galaxy. God, may we be the true light of the galaxy and share the good news of Jesus Christ. I said, challenge accepted. your word in our hearts so that in our star quest to each others we may continue to grow in you in jesus name amen
Come on, why don't you stand, give them a big hand.